All right. Let's do some more examples of polynomial inequalities. So we're in section P4 on page 44, looking at exercise 34, which is x cubed plus x squared minus 9x minus 9. And this should be less than 0. So the way we start these off is by finding out, well first we get everything on one side which is already done. But then we're going to find out where the polynomial, this thing on the left, is equal to zero. And that's called, I'm labeling that step, going from an inequality to an equality. Inequality to equality. So the less than just changes to an equal to. Now, this is a cubic. It's got all the quadratic stuff, but it's also got an x cubed, which disqualifies it from being a quadratic. But like when we were factoring quadratics, this has four things in it, four terms. And it looks like I can factor this if I look at the first two terms and pull out what's in common, and then do the same with the last two terms. So in the first two terms, here I have three x's in the first term, two x's in the second term. So if I pull out two x's as x squared, I have the third x, you know, one x remaining, and then in the second term is just plus one for the placeholder. Now, in order for me to get the same thing over here, to get x plus one in parentheses, I can pull out 9, but pulling out 9 will leave me with negatives inside here. So let's try pulling out minus 9. And let's see if we get the same thing. Minus 9 times x is minus x. Minus 9 times 1 is minus 9. So that's perfect. Now we can finish the factoring by grouping because we have x plus 1 being in common with both terms. And pulling out x plus 1, in the first term I'm left with x squared, oops, in the second term I'm left with minus, not plus, 9. Now, I've got this fairly well factored. You could factor this further if you wanted to, because it's a difference of squares, but I'm going to assume you don't know how to factor that. In which case, it's okay here to say, well, I've got a product of two things being zero, so either the first thing, x plus one is zero, or the second thing, x squared minus nine, is zero. So over here, for x plus one equals zero, subtracting one from both sides gets us x equals minus one. In the second equation, we can add nine to both sides, This is kind of a special quadratic because it has x squared and just numbers. There's no x's, you know, on their own. So we can take square roots of both sides, adding the obligatory plus or minus, and square root of 9 is 3. So we've got three places where this inequality, this polynomial rather, is equal to zero. So let's see, if we go to this number line, this step three I'm calling, well, what's the smallest, the leftmost x value? Minus one, negatives are, are far to the left, plus, nope, negative one wins out, minus three. Nope, minus three is further to the left than minus one. So I'm going to mark this down. I'm going to mark down a minus 3 on my x-axis here. Then 
which is the next one that I'm going to encounter going left to right? Well, the next one I'm going to encounter is minus 1. Then I'm going to hit my y-axis when x is 0. And the only other x value I have left is 3. So what these do is these divide up the x-axis. They divide up the graph. And we know that the graph is going to cross at 3, minus 3, minus 1, and 3. But what we don't know is whether this thing, whether this graph, this polynomial, on the far left, is it above or below? In between these two, above or below? In between minus 1 and 3, is it above or below? And to the right of 3, is it above or below? So we pick out test points. I need an x value to the left of minus 3. So something like, say, minus 4. Pick something close, so you're dealing with small x values. I plug that into my polynomial here. And I try to find out, is this going to be positive or negative? In fact, I can even plug it into the factored form here, which is going to be really convenient. This is, doing it this way, I find this to be the easiest way to evaluate. So then minus 4 squared minus 9. So minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 times minus 4 squared. Minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. So this is minus 3 times 7. And then that's a minus 21. So to the left of minus 3, I got negative, a negative y value. So a negative y value is below the x-axis. Now I need to focus on between minus 3 and minus 1. Let's try something like minus 2. Didn't give myself enough room here, so minus 2. Again, I'm going to plug it into the factored form, but really you could plug it in at any stage. You, know, you, could plug, you could plug it into this polynomial, ignoring the less than 0. You could plug it into the factored form, ignoring the equal 0. Doesn't matter. Whichever form you plug it into, all we're trying to find out is whether or not this positive, whether or not this polynomial is positive or negative, above or below the x-axis at these particular x values. So minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1. Minus 2 squared is minus 2 times minus 2, or minus 4. So then we have minus 1 times minus 5, which is a plus 5. So with plus 5, so at this x value, we get a positive y value. Positive y values are above the x-axis. So I'm going to write pluses for positive and put them above the x-axis because positive y values are above. Now I need to try something between minus 1 and 3. Something like, say, x equals 0. And again, I can pick any x value between minus 1 and 3. I could have picked 2. I could have picked 1.999999, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Any x value between here, you're free to choose. So pick something that's going to be easy for you. So we have 0 plus 1, again sticking it in the factored form here, 0 squared minus 9. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 squared is just 0. So 0 minus 9 is minus 9. And we multiply that with 1, which does nothing. So we end up with x equals 0, giving us a negative y value. So I'm going to write down negatives. And negative y values are below the x-axis. 
so I'm putting these negatives underneath the line. And then I need something like x equals anything to the right of 3 will work, so I can pick a million, but that's going to be rough doing the arithmetic. So, but if I pick something like 4, that still satisfies the condition. It's 4 is to the right of 3, and it's going to be a little bit easier to evaluate. So if I do 4 plus 1 times 4 squared minus 9, 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 squared is 16, 16 minus 9 is 7, and then 5 times 7 is 35. That's a plus 35. So I'm going to write down pluses, and plus y values, positive y values, are above. So I'm writing these pluses above the x-axis. And now, I need to think about whether I want positives, negatives, and whether I want endpoints or not. Well, go back to the original. I want the polynomial to be less than zero. Well, I don't want positives because positive numbers aren't less than zero. I have to have negatives. Negative numbers are less than zero. So I'm going to only write down the intervals that have negatives on them. And here's one interval. It's the interval where any x value in this range is less than minus 3. So this interval is x less than minus 3. We choose this because the polynomial is negative. We've got negatives here in this interval. This is positive. We don't want positives. We want negatives. Here we've got another, neg another set of negatives. And these x values, the name for this interval, is all x values between minus 1 and 3. And we write that down as minus 1 less than x less than 3. And then the last interval is, has positives over it. And I don't want positives. I want negatives. Now I ask myself, do I want endpoints? And I can't spell because endpoints has a T in it, not a D. Well, not two Ds. Well, endpoints just means, is it okay if x is minus 3, minus 1, or 3? Well, if x is any one of these values, the polynomial will be 0. Is it okay if this, the left-hand side, is 0? Well, let's see. Is it okay if 0 is less than 0? No, 0 isn't smaller than 0. 0 is equal to 0. So this polynomial can't be 0. It has to be something that's strictly less than 0. So we don't take endpoints, and we don't put lines underneath here. That's excluding the endpoints. So our answer is the following. And in interval notation, this would be everything to the left of minus 3, so from minus infinity to minus 3, with parentheses on both. Ors become cups, become u's for unions. And then between minus 1 and 3, and we're excluding both endpoints, so we use parentheses around minus 1 and around 3. And that's your answer in interval notation. And we'll have to split this up into another video to do uh, one more example of this.